Welcome to The Coop, I'm Foul Play Gaming, and I'm happy to present you with this one-off special video having a look at the last 10 years of gaming. Going into 2020, we're about to hit a new decade, so I thought this would be a good time to look back at the last 10 years and see all of the games that have meant something to me whilst getting through this decade. So I'm going to list up the 20 best games that I've enjoyed playing and have meant something to me in these last 10 years. Now, I would love to put these in order of which ones I think are best to worst, but unfortunately that's far too hard to do with 20 games, I'm not going to lie. So instead, we're just going to go in date order, starting from the earliest game I played in 2010. There are other games I've been playing in this decade that were created before 2010, like World of Warcraft, for example. I'm not going to be including those. I'm only looking at games that have been created since the start of 2010 up until the end of 2019, starting 2020. So, let's get into the first one. So the first game I'm going to have a talk about is actually one that is a slight cheat because it came out in May 2009, but that is Minecraft. Now, technically, I did not get Minecraft when it first came out. I got it, I think, in end of 2010. Um, so it's definitely still in this decade for me. Now, Minecraft has a definitely has a soft spot in my heart. I've been playing it throughout the entire last 10 years on and off. Um, I have played it on pretty much any console you can imagine. I'm pretty certain I first got it on my Xbox 360. I also had it on my PS3. I also had it on my PS4. I've had it on PC. I've had it on mobile. Um, the only one I don't think I've had it on is my Switch. Minecraft, I've had so much fun. I can't even count the amount of worlds that I've created, the amount of friends that I've played with, some of the massive creations that I've made, some of the massive worlds that I've built and towns that I've built, castles I've built. And even still, Minecraft always still drags me back in. What's amazing about Minecraft, though, is just how much it's developed in the last 10 years. They've never really stopped pumping out updates for it and has always kept it interesting. Minecraft is definitely up there for probably one of my favourite games of this decade. But it definitely is in my 20 games that have changed how I've looked at games. The next game I'm going to talk about is Battlefield Bad Company 2. Being released in March 2010, it was a spin-off of the main Battlefield series, the second in its series of Bad Company. There still hasn't been a Battlefield Bad Company 3. I believe they are making one, I cannot wait for it. Now what made Battlefield Bad Company 2 stand out so much to me was its campaign. Now for those that know me, I'm not actually much of a single player person, however, the Battlefield Bad Company 2 campaign was astonishing. The story that it told with the NPC companions you had was so heartwarming. It really, really pulls on your heartstrings throughout the entire, enti uh, the entire game. Um, and I, the amount of people I've told over the last 10 years that it is still to date my favourite campaign in a first person shooter. The multiplayer was also very good with its destruction, just like Battlefield, it was a lot of fun. But for the campaign alone, Battlefield Bad Company 2 will always have a place in my heart. Next on my list is Gears of War 3, which came out on September 2011. Now when I got this game, I got it on my Xbox. I did not get this on PC, which I don't think it was even on PC. Um, and it was the third game in the Gears of War series. I did play Gears of, One, uh, Gears of War 1 and 2 as well, but actually Gears of War 3 was the one I first bought. Um, I enjoyed it so much that I then bought 1 and 2 to play through. The Gears of War campaign was absolutely fantastic. Once again, I can't stress enough how much I'm not a single player person, but I love the Gears of War 3 campaign. My best memory from it is cutting out of that giant worm. You, you can't forget doing it. Uh, the multiplayer as well was fantastic. It was the first type of multiplayer game I played that was a uh, third person shooter, um, where you kind of, you got a lot of tactical cover. It was a lot of fun. Nothing better than getting a finishing move on someone with your chainsaw. Uh, it has a lot of good memories, on top of the fact that I played this with some of my best friends at school and it was just an absolute laugh, very competitive as well. Gears of War 3 will always have a place in my memory when it comes to games. Um, it was around the age when I was really getting into gaming after school um, and Gears of War 3, I just I can't even count how many hours I put into it. But for that reason, it is definitely in my top 20 games of this decade. Next up is actually Battlefield 3 which came out October 2011. Now Battlefield 3, 
uh, once again did have a campaign like Battlefield Bad Company 2. However, the reason why Battlefield 3 sticks with me is due to the multiplayer. It was around the time of Battlefield 3 that I first started properly getting into my PC gaming. Up until that point I was more so on consoles and Battlefield 3 I hammered home on the multiplayer on PC. I have great memories of playing some amazing EDM and house music playlists, um, getting on the multiplayer and just playing for hours and hours on end. Now I must admit, I'm now 26 years old. I was what, about 17 when, when Battlefield 3 came out? About that. I can't, I'm not, not going to do quick math. And I was racking up the kills. I was so good at Battlefield 3. And because of that, I enjoyed it so much. Um, I started making more friends on uh, that play on PC rather than console. Um, and I remember having some amazing squads and having some amazing memories of some of the funny plays we had. Sticking C4s to helicopters, um, running around and getting amazing flanks. And just some of the destruction in that game was amazing. So Battlefield 3 will always be one that I remember from this decade. Next on my list is something that's not even properly multiplayer for once, which is Far Cry 3. Now I've always been a fan of the Far Cry series, having some of the original games, but in this decade we had the joy to play Far Cry 3. Far Cry 3 was definitely a massive step up for the series, bringing a massive new map, so much pl replayability, lots of free roam, and a very very in-depth story. This game was so much fun to just go off the beaten track, drive around and see what you can find. The guns were fantastic, the mechanics of healing yourself were fantastic, and the NPCs were hilarious as well. Actually, one best memory I have of this game is there was one bit of the main campaign that actually was bugged and I couldn't get past it. And for about a year, I just put down the game because I was too frustrated to start the game again. Eventually, I did start it again because I couldn't get past the glitch and this time around it worked and I did eventually complete the campaign. But that game was an absolute masterpiece for the Far Cry series and definitely has always been my favourite one. Wasn't a big fan of Far Cry 4 or 5, but Far Cry 3 is always going to be with me. The next game on my list is a completely different genre, an MMORPG, a ma massively multiplayer online role-playing game. Now I've played lots of these in the past like World of Warcraft, RuneScape, EVE Online, but in this decade the first one that really came to mind was Guild Wars 2. Guild Wars 2 came out in August 2012 and it was an MMORPG with amazing artwork and background and lore. The actual design itself of the game, the graphics are very artistic, it looks like everything has been painted on your screen. The classes and the systems felt so fluid, the amount of story in the game was ridiculous, you, there was story everywhere you looked. They even wrote a three series of books of lore for when the game came out, as well as custom soundtracks. This game was just an absolute masterpiece to play, I had so much fun. Plus, the multiplayer had World v World v World. It was the first multiplayer MMO that I'd experienced, where you'd have hundreds of players in one area fighting for constant castles that are available all 24-7 around the clock. It was so much fun, and I've got some amazing memories of some big battles, and I can still remember what my main character looked like. Guild Wars 2 definitely is going to be a game I remember for a long time. Now also in November 2012, I had another game in my list, which is Planet Side 2. Not many people may have heard of Planet Side 2, as it never ended up being an absolutely massive game, but it was a game that I played for a long, long time. For those that don't know it, Planet Side 2 was a game whereby you had three factions that had to fight over a large, large area to try and win dominance over certain sections. Now, what was beautiful about this game is it was a game that had 24-7 servers up, whereby you had to fight for particular zones. So you could, with your friends, go around and capture loads of zones, go to bed, wake up in the morning, and they've been recaptured by someone else. So you'd have to get back on and recapture it. It was a really, really large scale, so some of the big cities you had to have massive fights. But if you fancied smaller fights, you could go to smaller areas that weren't as populated and still gain new territory for your team. The fact that it was territorial, with lots of different classes and vehicles, was so much fun. My best memory from it was I got really, really good at piloting one of the uh, smaller type uh, hovercraft planes, and I got really good at being in uh, controlling that airspace, destroying other aircraft, and providing support to people on the ground. And I've even got some clips from my old YouTube channel, which you're probably watching now, of me using that craft. 
Planet Side 2 is a fantastic game. I wish there were more games like that today. Next, we're moving to March 2013 and the game Bioshock Infinite. Again, sticking away from what I usually go for, it's another campaign game, not multiplayer. The reason why this one sticks out for me so much is I was so reluctant to play it. I hadn't played the first two and I was going off campaign games. Yet my friend Ashley said, no, Charlie, you've just got to play it. So I gave it a go. And wow, I can't even describe how much it captivated me. The story being so in depth and just so different. There's, there's to this day, no other campaign I've seen that has just had so many twists and turns and been so just so in, that's just so engrossed me in the campaign i don't know how else i can describe it and if you haven't played it then you really need to give it a go and if you have played it you probably know what i'm trying to describe here but bioshock infinite will be a game that i never forget Next on my list is now moving into 2013 in January, and it's another MMORPG that came out called Arcage. Now, Arcage is a fantastic MMORPG. It has all your generic elements of an MMORPG, but it had some things that really stood out. First of all, it was the first MMORPG I played that had player housing. You could find a random spot of grass in that server, and you can claim it as your own. Build a house, have a farm, and that is yours. No one can touch it. On top of this, you could also uh, make ships and you could sail between islands in real time. If you wanted to, you could play the whole game just being a pirate. What was brilliant about this game is it was very sandboxy. You could play it your way. It wasn't just a case of fighting. You could be someone who controls the economy and build uh, materials and move them across. You could be a courier and just move people's materials for them and get paid for it. You could be a pirate and just steal things from people crossing the sea. You could even be a good pirate. People would pay you for protection for crossing goods across a sea. It was an amazing game. I have one particularly good memory of this where I'm not going to go into it too much detail because it would take me 10 minutes to say. But essentially it was a 200 v 200 battle fighting for one flag to be able to claim land for the first castles when they brought that out. And I'm so, so proud to be the person that in my group of 200 people, I was the one that managed to just uh, kill one of the enemy people, steal their flag and place it in the ground uh, and win that castle. I was in TeamSpeak when it happened and you should have heard all of about 70 or 80 people that were in that TeamSpeak at the time roar and cheer out my name or my username anyway when I planted that flag. It was probably to this date the best gaming feeling I've had. For that reason, Arcade is probably going to be a game that I never forget. Now moving into 2014, and actually quite late into 2014, September, we've got Destiny. Now Destiny doesn't need much introduction. If you don't know what Destiny is, I'm not sure what you're doing watching a gaming video. But Destiny was a game that I got, I think I actually got it on PS4. Although I had a PC, I did get it on PS4. And I played the hell out of it. It is. It was a game that gave me a lot of nostalgia from games like Halo, but just gave something new with the way that you could do the kind of co-op, freestyle, free um, uh, open world kind of missions, and also the multiplayer and the raids. Pile it all together and it was just an amazing game. Um, it kind of just had a bit of everything that I enjoy with the open world, the looting, the replayability, the multiplayer, and just how fluid and well produced that game was. I don't think I really need to say too much more about why Destiny is an amazing game, but it definitely is in the top 20 games that I have found that I've enjoyed this year. Oh shit. Whoop a daisy. Well, oh, yes. I blame Ashley straight Sweet. away. Look, look, Ashley, see that? <laughs> see that again, again! <laughs> Bonks me twice. Oh. Now we're moving all the way into 2015, and we're going straight to July, where we're having a look at Rocket League. 
So Rocket League once again came out on PC and consoles in July of 2015. Uh, and once again, I actually got it on PS4 first. It was just for reference, it was around this stage in my life that I actually started my first proper YouTube channel uh, called MK Freaks with some friends. And we absolutely adored Rocket League. And you know what? I was damn good at it as well. Uh, it was just the first kind of game of its kind. I think the closest we had to this was maybe car football in Forza 3. Um, but that kind of fun of football, but also the fun of kind of toy cars driving around at high speeds. It was the best game for being easy to learn, hard to master. And I love games like that, that draw you in by the fact that it's really easy to get, get going. But to get really, really good at it, it takes a while. And we had so much fun. I think I can think of so many nights that I spent drunk off my ass playing Rocket League on a LAN party with friends and just, it was an amazing time. Rocket League is still going strong now and I still occasionally play it. And when I do, even though I haven't played it for years sometimes, it still has the same amazing feel of putting a smile on my face. <laughs> Moving into December of 2015 and we have quite a big one, Rainbow Six Siege. Rainbow Six Siege was an absolute amazing game when it first came out and it got extremely popular extremely fast. The main thing that made it so good was it's the first game of this, well really of, of this genre, where you've got slow paced multiplayer first person shooter action based around objectives whereby the faster you go the more likely you are to die. It was all about teamwork and tactics and when this game first came out I bought it on release day and I played it pretty much solidly for about two years um, before I eventually stopped playing it. And in that time, I got all the way up to diamond ranks. I also played a lot of casual games. We also made our own game modes up in custom games and just had so much fun. Once again, this was during the hype of my old YouTube channel where I was playing with six friends. We came up with loads of funny video ideas. And even today, you can go to MK Freaks YouTube and see some of the hilarious videos we made. We made loads of parodies as well. It was just so, so much fun. Um, Rainbow Six Siege is a game that I also got on PC. Um, I didn't get on with it as much on PC, but Rainbow Six Siege will always have a soft spot in my heart because of how much fun I had with my friends playing it. I must admit, a few controls were thrown around the room during this period of time, but Rainbow Six Siege is just a fantastic game, and I think everyone will agree that it has been probably one of the most popular games this decade. Right. Oh, I've got the last one here as well. So now moving into 2016, we've got quite a few games in this year that we're going to talk about. To start with, we're looking at February 2016, when Stardew Valley came out. Now, Stardew Valley is a game that I thoroughly enjoy playing, because I love farming simulator-type games that are just chilled, something that you can pick up and play really easily, and just play for hours, and have no stress, after playing maybe a few hours of multiplayer games that have got you tilted. Now, a bit of a throwback, games like Animal Crossing, the original Animal Crossing, I played that so much in my childhood, and I've been craving games like it since. And Stardew Valley, for a while, has filled that little hole in my heart of games like Animal Crossing. Now, I'm looking forward to 2020 for the new Animal Crossing, but Stardew Valley has been a major part of my decade of 2010-2020, purely because of how much it has helped me just have some really chilled gaming when I've needed it. Moving on just a little further until May of 2016, we're talking about Overwatch. Now, technically, I didn't get Overwatch until the end of 2017, but we're still going to talk about it now based on when it came out. Now, Overwatch is an amazing first-person shooter, team-based game. I know that technically Team Fortress 2 did it first, and I know that in the current state, Overwatch is still not perfect. However, we can't all not agree that Overwatch is an amazing game. Now, the main thing for me of Overwatch is I know I've put in loads of hours, had loads of fun, the main thing that makes me love Overwatch so much is if it wasn't for Overwatch and Blizzard in general, I would not have actually have met my wife Rhea. We met at work and bonded very early on over Overwatch and it was only through playing Overwatch for nights in a row that we got talking more and eventually we got married. Uh, we even had an Overwatch cake. On top of that, Overwatch has been one of the first games that I properly started my streaming career with so it also has 
it holds two special places in my heart. It helped me get my wife, and it also has helped me start my streaming career. Overwatch, I still play it quite a bit, and I still enjoy it, albeit it's not my favourite game in the moment. Um, but what can I say? Overwatch will always, always be something I can remember. Moving into July of 2016 now, we have something that's actually a bit different in our list. Pokemon Go. Now, Pokemon Go was a game that came out on mobile devices where you'd have to walk around in the real life to try and catch Pokemon. Now, when Pokemon Go first came out, uh, it actually didn't come out in the UK for a while. I actually managed to find a bit of a uh, workaround so I, I could get it early. I even created a YouTube video on how to get it early in the UK and it got like 50k views, which is probably my best ever YouTube video. I mean, not probably, it is. Pokemon Go itself though, I had so much fun playing. I remember jumping in my car with my mate and we would be out on the road till 4 in the morning going to different hotspots where we knew we'd find certain Pokemon. I trespassed on golf courses, I like we got in really weird places, people saw us, they probably thought we'd be doing drugs, but nope, we were sat there catching Pikachus. It was a game that kind of shook the nation, um, it brought people out, it got people social. I remember sitting there in a field full of people, about 50 people, all catching the same Pokemon, and none of us knew each other, but it was just, we all knew what we were doing, and it was so, so much fun. For that reason, Pokemon Go has to be in one of my top 20 games for this year, purely just to how different it was. And it's also started off a bit of a run of other games with augmented reality coming out that is really exciting to see where it takes us into the next decade. Now moving into March of 2016, and we have Tom Clancy's The Division. Now when this game first came out, I actually got it on PS4. I did also later in the years get it on PC as well. I played it mostly on PS4 though, and I had an amazing time. I mostly played it with one of my best mates, Ashley, and we joined a group called the Division Elites, and we had an amazing clan with them, playing through the story multiple times, doing lots of Dark Zone, and the Division was just the first of its kind of that kind of MMORPG style game, but with third person FPS combat. And it was just so much fun the way they designed it with some of the uh, combat features you had, some of the abilities you had to work for. Um, the map itself was beautiful. Yes, I did try closing every card door in the map. Um, failed significantly. Um, but it is just such an amazing game and was a huge, huge success. Uh, it kind of filled my need at that time for a decent MMO and a decent FPS. And I can still think of some amazing memories of some of the times I had with the Division Elites playing in a massive group, hitting some massive world bosses and doing some amazing plays in the PvP area of the Dark Zone. <laughs> Moving just one month into June 2016, we of course have Dead by Daylight. Now just like Overwatch, I didn't actually get on the Dead by Daylight train when it first came out. I first started playing Dead by Daylight at the start of 2018. In fact, I think it was actually a little bit more in 2018. Now, Dead by Daylight still is a game that I want to have a chat about, because if you don't already know, that's all I play right now when streaming. Dead by Daylight, like Overwatch, is nowhere near perfect. It's still not perfect, but it is one of a kind with its type of play style. There are no other games out there right now that are as enjoyable and as perfected as Dead by Daylight. Now I use the word perfected carefully, I know it's still got some issues, but compared to other games that are trying to do the same thing, Dead by Daylight is doing it right. For those that don't know, Dead by Daylight is a game where it's 1v4, killer versus survivors, to try and escape a trial. And it's just a type of game, and what I like about Dead by Daylight the most is, since I've gotten a little bit older, now I know 26 isn't old. I'm, for those that are over 26, I'm sorry, I'm not trying to say 26 is old. But in a gaming career, once you've got past your teens, you do tend to lose a bit of your reflexes. And I must admit, in first-person shooter games nowadays, I'm not as good. But what I love about Dead by Daylight is it's less about your physical skill, although there is still skill in using a mouse and keyboard. It's a lot about mind games. It's a lot about figuring things out before they happen and anticipating moves and counter moves all within sometimes split second decisions. And that is what I'm loving about Dead by Daylight. Even though you're doing the same thing over and over again, every single game is different. They never play the same way, um, apart from, you know, slugging, camping, tunneling, but we're not gonna talk about that. 
Dead by Daylight is also the game that has really propelled me in my streaming career. And I've also met loads of amazing, amazing people. You all know who you are um, through playing Dead by Daylight and streaming. So Dead by Daylight, I'm probably going to say now, is my best game of the decade purely for how much it has brought me and a load of other people together as a community. The last one of 2016 comes of July 2016. Now don't hate me for this one, but it is Fortnite. Now when Fortnite first came out, as we're talking about the Battle Royale mode as well, not not the uh, PvE mode, uh, it was actually a beta on the console, and I picked it up the second it was uh, available on beta, and I thoroughly enjoyed it. I actually was pretty good at it. Now regrettably, I stopped playing it because I thought this won't take off. Yeah, that probably wasn't the best decision to make. But I loved Fortnite when it first came out. I played it all the time. I got loads of wins and I had so much fun learning the game and playing it with friends. Now, I know that it has its bad reputation for some of its player base, but I still think that Fortnite is a game changer for this decade. I know there were other battle royales before Fortnite, but Fortnite really brought the battle royale mode to life. Um, and it really captivated audiences with that type of playstyle and has now just caused a landslide of other games companies trying to make battle royales to top it and apart from maybe apex legends fortnite has just not been toppled for that reason fortnite has to be on this top 20 list because of how much fun i've had with it and just how successful it has been Leaving 2016 behind now, we're moving into 2017, specifically March 2017, where we had the release of Nintendo Switch, and with it, Legend of Zelda Breath of the Wild. I was so excited to get the Nintendo Switch, and to get the new Zelda. Now, I didn't play that many of the other Zeldas when I was growing up. I played a couple, but not all of them. But this game really, really captivated me with the trailers. And I gave it a go, and I was addicted. I was coming home from work every day, getting on the Nintendo Switch, I put about 60 hours in in a couple of weeks um, purely to finish the campaign and even when I finished it I kept going back for more other story missions, I even replayed it on the master uh, mastery mode or whatever it was called again, um, the hardcore mode basically and I just had so much fun. It's another, once again, considering that I don't really play many single player campaign games anymore it just captivated me with how amazing it was to play and I can't really speak for all of the Zeldas but it's definitely been the best Zelda game I've ever played and possibly the best Nintendo game I've ever played and really really enjoyed. Now the last game I want to talk about comes around of September 2018 and this is actually a game completely different to any other one we've discussed in this decade which is Forza Horizon 4. Now I've always enjoyed my driving games when I was younger, I was a big fan of some of the original Gran Turismo's, I was a massive fan of some of the Need for Speed series, and I also played quite a bit of the original Forza series on my Xbox 360 uh, when I was younger. Now Forza Horizon 4 is the first driving game I've probably gotten back into in the last 5 or 6 years, and boy was it a good one to come back to. Uh, I got myself a steering wheel and pedals. And I had so much fun playing this game and completing all the initial missions. Um, I streamed quite a lot of it and had a lot of fun and met some amazing people. And it was just an absolute joy to play. Now, I'm not going to say that it is. It probably not isn't. It probably isn't even in the top 20 of actual all-time games of this decade if we were all to do a public list. But for me personally, Forza Horizon has been a lot of fun. It's a game that I will no doubt keep picking up every now and then just for that little nostalgia of just driving around in my favourite cars and just having an absolute blast. The fact it was set in the UK and had some of the cars that I own or have owned also made it hit home quite hard. So Forza Horizon 4 is a game that I will always remember of this decade. And that's it. Just like that, we've come to the end of my 20 games that I've enjoyed playing this decade. Now, there are lots of other games that I have played this decade and had so much fun with. I can't even count the amount of hours I've put into games like Smite or EVE Online around all the other games I've been playing. And if I sat here for ages, I could think of so many more. But otherwise, this video would be far too long if I did that, so we're going to wrap it up. It's been an, an amazing decade of games. It has brought me loads of fun, it's brought me loads of joy, 
it's brought me my wife technically and it's also brought me into the streaming and YouTube world and that has been an amazing part of my life. I am so looking forward to 2020 and the next decade. More so because starting 2020 I'm going to be getting my hands properly on VR gaming and I can't wait to feel that experience and to be able to see what is going to happen in the next 10 years. Even just now, looking at the difference in the types of games that were created in 2010 to 2019, it's so surprising how far games have come. To think where we're going to be 10 years from now in 2029, almost 2030, it's so exciting to see where we're going to get to. And hopefully I'll do another one of these videos in 10 years. Who knows, we'll see. I've been Foul Play Gaming. thank you very much for watching. I would love it if you could spam the comments with any games that you think that I've missed, any games that you agree with, or any games that you th just want to talk about for reasons that you might feel they're special to you. Thank you very much for joining me in this video. Like and subscribe if you haven't already, and see me at twitch.tv forward slash foul underscore play underscore gaming to see me live on Tuesdays, Thursdays, and the weekends. Thank you.